Hello guys, I'm the Trading Parrot, and if your account is looking a little bit like this disaster here, and the name of your bots are starting to feel like account destroyer number one, account destroyer number two, yes, that makes a lot of sense because in the last year, the only token that is in the positive is Solana. There's nothing really left in the green in a whole year. If we look at the net unrealized loss, which is more or less all the people holding a red bag, it's been increasing until this level. You can clearly see that in the last year, there's been an increase in the amount of red bags. And if you compare this to capitulation event of the previous cycle, that's more or less how it looks when you're in a bear market you start peaking higher and higher in terms of unrealized losses. And if we look at people holding green bags that they haven't realized yet, they start coming down because as we approach the bear market, they start taking profits, some of them very early and some of them very late. Yes, that eventually has to come to an end, but how long can that take really? It could take weeks, months, a full year until the next halving event, who knows? So the question is, what do we do in the meantime with all these red bags? There are so many alternatives that it gets overwhelming to think about. I could hedge it with another futures account doing shorts. I could just sell it everything and take the loss. I could put it in a grid bot. I could use it as collateral to run other long bolts. I mean, ideas, there are hundreds of them. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing with situations like this sort of bots. And I'm going to also tell you how I cherry pick from all the red bags, which ones I prefer just to just take the loss. And some of them I decide to keep for longer. And some of them I decide to apply this approach, which consists in doing a short bot with a very max deviation to together with a smart trade which helps me track the original entry price. So get comfy, take some notes, have a look at the timestamps so you can skip exactly to each individual part. I'm going to start first explaining how I cherry pick which tokens I do something about it and why. Then I'm going to move into what actions I take with the actual deal from the DCA bot step by step until I finally build a short bot like this that I'm intending to run for as long as the bear market is still in place. Don't worry, I'm also going to cover the risk management aspect of the short bots because short bots, in my opinion, are even more risky than long bots. Just bear in mind that you do have to do your own research and understand how these bots work before you mimic any of my strategies. I'm just sharing these ideas because this is what I'm exactly doing. If you have an alternative approach, just share it in the comments. I'm very interested to know what you guys are doing with your red bags. So let's get started. First of all, it's pretty overwhelming to see so many deals in red. And if you didn't add any funds, you just let the bot run there. How to know what to do with it? Should I use the reverse bot? Should I convert it into a smart trade? I understand it's not easy to decide what to do. Also, emotionally, it's not nice to look at the account and see exactly the state of the account like this. And every day you see that they go a little bit lower and lower. The step number one I'm going to take is I'm going to focus on all the deals that I have in this account. This is paper trading account and I intentionally created an account destroyer bot just to help me illustrate the situation of an account like this. But the first thing I'm going to do as a step number one is to sort by volume. Here we have the deal with the largest volume in the whole account. Okay, step number one is done. Pretty easy. Now we're going to look into the max deviation of the bot that is into this red bag. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and we're going to look at the trades it made and we're going to focus on this area here. This bot has only a max deviation of 10%. What that means is that from the base order, the last safety order is located at 10% down. And the deal now is pretty much almost at a 70% down, a seven times the max deviation. So what are the odds that if we continue going sideways or if we start even going lower or if we experience a dead cut bounce to the upside and we go to 50 and we go to 35K and then we keep going down, what are the odds that this closes? Potentially, one of these deals is going to close. I'm not saying that's not possible, but closing all of them in a dead cat bounce is going to be almost impossible. So in my opinion, 
I'm going to try to take some small profits from these holdings here by doing the short bot. So clearly, I want to do something about this one. So now step number three is consisting in investigate the actual token. What is the value of the token? Do I know about the project? Do I think it's been resilient in the past year? Because let's face it, we are currently, if not already in a recession, we are entering a recession. And at the same time, there is a war, all these challenges in the macroeconomy in the world. Many of these tokens are down, not because there's something particularly bad with them, apart from obviously Luna, that yeah, that was a black swan event around a token. But the rest of the tokens here, we cannot say that all of them suddenly became terrible projects and that's why they are so down. This is just overreaction of the market to move away from risk on assets. That's it. So if things go the other way around and the market starts pumping higher, many of these things are going to have a recovery. I'm not saying all of them, the ones that have big value are going to recover. Many of the ones that are showing resilience now, they have higher chances to see a recovery. Let's have a look at the chart on the monthly for Solana. If we look at the movement of the price since June 2021 to June 2022, you're going to see that it's at profit right now and it's above the previous all-time high so it's showing a decent strength against all the things that are going on in the market it looks pretty similar to what bitcoin is doing so this is a good candidate of a token that i would like to retain i wouldn't like to sell Dodge is interestingly hovering right above touching that top wig of the all-time high in 2021. It's threatening to lose it. But if we look at the performance of a whole year, it's minus 73%. So June to June is 73%. That is exactly the opposite that we are seeing with Solana. I'm not saying you have to sell your Dogecoin, but I'm just trying to show you the range of how we can qualify a token from resilient to very poorly performing against the odds of the market. And that should play a very important role in you deciding what to exactly do with the token. So, okay, the next thing we have to do is I'm assuming that because we sort by volume, that this is my largest volume red bag and therefore is probably the first one that I want to start working with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into smart trade. So the assumption is I want to keep the token, it's big volume, and I think the token is resilient, it's worth keeping. I don't think it's going to go to zero. I think there's a high chance that these guys are doing well, they're building the next year, and maybe at the end of the next year, it's going to bounce very strongly. If that is your belief, then you can start taking the next steps. So I'm going to turn it into a smart trade. I'm going to click smart trade convert. You can decide whether you want to stop or not the bot. Remember, if you don't stop the bot and the bot has more allocations, it's going to start another trade potentially very soon. So you have to decide. I will suggest to stop the bot if you don't want any further deals. So click on stop the bot, go to confirm. This is going to take me now to the smart trade interface and it's asking me to review the details. So now the smart trade is already placed. It's retaining the same take profit as before. If there were further safety orders unfilled, they are no longer here. So everything as it was at the time you click smart trade is copy into these boxes here. So you only have a take profit. If you were using a stop loss, potentially that gets copied here. I didn't have one, so I don't have anything on the right hand side. Here is the trick. I want the smart trade to tell me where am I at all times with my deal. I want to go throughout the whole bear market looking at this percentage, even monitoring it on my phone and thinking, okay, this is the largest deal that I have is $900 and I want to at the same time in parallel run a short bot that's taking small profits. But what's the problem? If you want to run in parallel a short bot together with this to monitor where is your average position throughout the bear market, then there is a limitation. We cannot have this in a limit order. If we have it in a limit order, it's going to place that order in the exchange. It's going to lock these funds and you won't be able to do anything 
everything with this 13.2 AXS. In order to not lock down those funds in the exchange, you can change this to market order. You can even keep the, the trailing take profit. Just make sure that you don't use limit order because that's not going to allow you to have on the side a DCA short bot shorten the token at the same time that you use this just to track it. Another alternative is to simply not have any take profit and then save the, the changes. My personal preference is to set up here a big take profit, let's say a 50% with a trailing take profit of maybe 5% with a trading profit of, of 5%, which is 10% of this take profit. And that won't place a limit order in the exchange. And then we are fine to set up a short bot with exactly the same funds in parallel. So let's save this. And now throughout the bear market, you can look at this and monitor where are you. Let's say you are in profit 10% because there is a dead cat bounce and you're running your short bot. You might decide to just sell the rest of, the, of it and just exit this position because you were never intending to hold AXS for a long term. You are just exiting now. Okay, we're done with the smart trade. Now we're going to go into the most important part, which is how do we set up a short bot that gives me small profits from AXS. So we are going to have to select here your holdings of AXS. We're going to call this AXS short bot. We can select short here and I'm going to select here AXS. Why am I doing that with AXS? Because I want to short exactly the amount of AXS that I have here. We have 60. If you look in this area, we can see that I have 13.2 AXS that I want to short. And my bot is showing me that I have 60. That means that I have other bots or other holdings of AXS on the side that don't belong exactly to this deal. What do you do in that case? In that case, potentially what you can do, you can go to my deals and then instead of only looking for this bot, look for all the bots that are doing AXS by searching here. If you end up deciding to turn all of them into a smart trade, you're going to end up with multiple AXS positions that are in red here. And what you're going to have to do potentially is take note of each one of them. You can expand here and see the details of each one of them. And it's going to show you the buying price and how much you bought. So 13.2 AXS bought at $68. Let's say you have another one that is 10 AXS at $100. And then you have many more. What you're going to have to do is a weighted average of your actual average position. You're going to have to calculate it manually in a spreadsheet or in a calculator. So you multiply this by the price and then you divide by the total price and you're going to get the weighted average. Once you get the weighted average, you can delete the redundant smart trades and end up with a single smart trade that you can edit and then put the average price of all the aggregated volume you have of AXS and the total amount, which in my account was 60, and then decide for the total volume that you bought, where do you want to place the take profit? The whole point is to simplify things and end up with a single smart trade per pair that tracks your average total position on a single token before you start doing the first short on that token. Otherwise, you're going to end up with multiple redundant short bots on the same token. And that's going to be more difficult to manage in the long term. They're going to compete for the funds. It's going to become pretty much a mess. So it's better to consolidate your total amount of the token that you want to short in a single smart trade and track the average price with a single smart trade before you create the short bot for that token. Okay, let's assume all that work is done and let's assume now that I can short my 60 AXS. We have here the short bot. We already put the name. We put the token. We have the 60 AXS there. We select the short and now we are going to start using the template that I really like to do the shorts. We're going to use open deal ASAP. I'm going to use a 5% with 10% of that of trailing deviation. I usually start with 30 orders and here I place only five in the exchange. I start here with a volume of 0 0.5. So the more the price goes up, I sell larger portions of AXS and I spread them by around 1.1 to 1.2. That totally depends on how big I want the likelihood that I end up retaining this token if it ever pumps to the upside. 
So we got sorted the scale, we got sorted this, the number of orders. Now we need to do the fine tuning of the base order versus the safety order size. What do we have to achieve? We have to stay below the 100 volume that we have in the account. We cannot short more than what we have. So at the moment we are doing too much. So I start first with the safety order, reducing it significantly. So we are hitting here a problem that is very important that we cover it. Let's say you are seeing this error and you get tempted to go for 0 05 and you say, ah, problem solved. Well, the problem is that AXS might keep going further down. And when it comes further down, this minimum is gonna grow even more. So instead of being just 0 04, it could turn into 0 07. 0 8 and eventually one dollar you need to short to be able to enter a position in the exchange so in order to be safe instead of going for 0 5 here i'm gonna go just for one to have the least chances that i get caught but that's still above the maximum that we can short we don't have enough this is shorting much more than what we have we are getting a warning here so what are we gonna do you could alter two things here to reduce the volume that you're using you cannot go below in the safety order because you can face this other problem and you can reduce this volume and that should help. It's not helping at the moment because it's not enough to be below the 100%. So the only thing that is left that we can do is reduce the number of orders. If I go for just 15, now we are using 76% of everything that we can short. If I use 17, I'm getting close. With 18, I'm on 98%. So that seems like a good number. Once I'm settled with the volume of what I want to short, which in this case now is below 100%, so we have a check there. We're good to go with volume aspects. Now we need to look into scale aspects. So because we reduce this from 30 to 18, we are no longer doing a thousand percent there. So we need to readjust that because 128% is very low. AXS is coming down. It could come down there or even here and then decide to pump. But when it does do his thing, it can do a pump of <laughs> many thousand percents to the upside in a single bull year in order to try to sell it at a higher price than your entry price, you have to do everything you can in the short to stay on the safe side. And in order to achieve that, you have to keep a very high max deviation. That means that when the price is pumping, let's say we do something like this and then we start going bullish. Then let's say your entry price was here and you started shorting here. The last thing that you want is that you end up entering a short there and putting safety orders like this is and your last safety order is there, therefore your average selling price was there. So you take a loss of all this gap from here to here. That's not great. That's why when we do a short, what we can do is put a very large max deviation, like a thousand percent, like this, and benefit from these pullbacks to exit on the short and still retain the token. I feel like a thousand percent should be pretty good for many tokens. Not for all of them, they are tokens. For example, the one we are seeing here is doing much more than just a thousand percent. A thousand percent is this. The rest of the chart is a lot more to the upside. Look, I, I cannot even read the number. It's like 140,000 percent. This is just mental. So what can we do to increase this 128? We have two options. We can spread this price deviation here or we can increase the step scale. What is the difference? If we increase this number, it means that every safety order is going to equally be spatiated from each other as it grows up. And if we increase this other one here, which is a step scale, it means that the first orders are not going to separate that much. The higher you go, the more separated they're going to get from each other. If you want to visualize how this works, you can open this table here and you can see as you put more safety orders, where are in percentage the safety orders placed in the price going higher and higher and selling more and selling more. So if we keep this in one, it's very easy to understand. We see one, two, three, until 18. Each one, 1% 1 more. If we put this to two, then you get two multiples of two until you get to 36. If we put this back to one, but we make this double, then every time it doubles. So this grows massively. It gets to 262,000% 
to sell the last safety order by using two with 18 safety orders. So what are we going to do? We are going to do a combination of both. We're going to keep this in one and we're going to aim to get something around a thousand percent. Let's say we do two percent here and then something like this. The first safety order is split at two percent, but every time you place a new safety order, it grows 35% more the separation. And that's how we get to 1,261% for the last safety order. Does that mean that you're selling all your AXS at 1,200% in the upside? No, it's selling it little by little as it grows up. So if it goes 2% higher, it will sell $20 of your holding. If it goes 4.7% higher, it will say 23 until it gets to 1261% where it will sell a last safety order of $664. And this way of increasing in volume and in scale to the upside helps to retain the token when it pumps. Now, is a thousand percent enough for any pump? Absolutely not. This pump here is extremely challenging to, to deal with. We will have to do a back testing, and I'm pretty sure that if we back test this setup here and you enter a bull run like that, you will end up selling somewhere around here all your AXS and missing this run there. So be aware that doing a short like that is not necessarily going to guarantee that you keep that token for the whole bull run. The goal in this approach, at least for me, is that if I enter one position there and I started my short here and I run it for the whole bear market, I want to have the biggest chances that my short makes small cash here and at the same time gets wrecked at a place that is higher than my entry position. So somewhere here. And I don't mind if the rest of the bull run is, is gone, but I want to exit at profit relative to my entry price. You can always increase this to 5,000%. But that's going to come with a big compromise. That means that during the bear market, you're going to make less profits. So it's always a trade off between making this smaller means more profits in the bear market, but selling it very soon, as soon as we enter bull market. And making this very large means less profits in the bear market, but increasing the chances that you retain it during the bull market and then sell it at a higher price later. Initially, I was running the short bots with two percent and the profits were very often like every day you see from your short bots a little bit of profit but too insignificant so i increased this to five percent in my back tests and in my actual bots and i'm seeing better performance we are still not out of the woods in terms of bear market so i cannot tell you exactly how it's gonna behave for the rest of the bear market but i have certain confidence that five percent is a good compromise if you want to take a larger risk and really take bigger profits and you have conviction that the bear market is going to last for at least one year, then you are welcome to increase this 5% to larger numbers. Just bear in mind that the larger this number is, the longer you wait for a short deal to close. So it just means that it won't reach that 15% very easily. It might take a month to reach that 15%. But certainly when it does, if you stay in a bear market, you're going to see more profits than me keeping it at 5%. Some things that you can consider as well adding to this type of bot is a stop loss. A stop loss in case this starts pumping to the upside and you want to rebuy it if it pumps very very hard to not miss out. But that is something that I'm not personally doing. And the reason is this is already a thousand max deviation. So if you put a, a safety order, you will have to place it further than that. I would consider a stop loss if the bot used a very shallow max deviation, because that is an alternative way to short during this period in the market where you place way less safety orders, but you protect yourself with a stop loss. And that's definitely going to make more cash during the whole bear market, could potentially start hitting the stop loss very often. I suggest if you ever consider doing stop loss that you do proper backtesting with Gavin's backtester, or you can find many other back 
backtesters of TCA bots from 3Commas on TradingView. Many of them are free and find one that does short bots. Make sure you backtest your conditions on stop loss for each individual token that you're going to short. So that's an extra step that you will have to do to make sure that the stop loss is not getting hit constantly on certain conditions of the market. And that's one of the main reasons why I prefer to go for this. As you can see in my account, the amount of profits coming from shorts are not necessarily mind blowing, but this is an amount of cash that if I was just hodling, I will just miss out. And bear in mind that many of the short bots that I'm running are with way higher max deviation than 1000%, especially when I really do not want to miss out on a potential upcoming bull run in the future. Guys, let me know in the comments if you do have any red bags, what are you doing with them at the moment? Or what are you planning to do? I've heard so many interesting ideas of things that you can do with pre-commas to manage them and to take the best out of these circumstances. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.